did not clearly understand what it was he was seeing. He, he called things, you know, chariots of iron and things, you know, with, with wings were flying around and tails of fire. And I strongly believe that John was seeing the things that we have today. I believe he saw tanks and guns and helicopters and wars. John saw those things. We know that to be true. So John saw those things and knew the end was coming when he saw those things, but did not have an understanding of what they were. But here we are in 2014, and it didn't just happen overnight, Brother McCain. We've been in this for many, as long as I've been alive, I can remember the conflicts and the things that are happening. Folks, we see the things John talked about, but we know now what's going on. If there was ever a time to get ready, now's the time. If there was ever a time to make sure that your walk with God is where it needs to be, folks, now is the time. And I'm thankful tonight that everybody within the sound of my voice, you didn't choose to be somewhere else tonight. You didn't choose to be at home tonight, but you said, I'm going to come to church and I'm going to worship God because that's what's important to me. So it doesn't matter who invades who. It doesn't matter who is shamming who. It doesn't matter if the IRS is cheating people or not. Surprise. <laughs> who didn't see that coming? What matters is that I've got to walk with my Savior. Oh, come on, somebody, that nobody can take away from me. Brother McCain, nobody can take it from me. And so I'm thankful that God is a good God. I'm thankful that God is an awesome God. And I'm thankful that you are here tonight worshiping the Lord with us. Amen. Excited about what's going to happen later. Amen. The parish family, God bless you. Give them another big hand. We're glad they're here with us tonight. We love you very much. Glad that you're here. I love those kids. All those kids. And I saw that redhead and I said, there it is right there. It's a done deal right there. The world cannot have enough redheads in it for the record. So just mark it down. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, John chapter 11. If you have your Bibles, please turn there with me. John chapter 11 and verse number 1. Amen. I'm going to do my best to preach to you what the Lord laid on my heart for this service tonight. I was going to preach it Sunday night, and then obviously the Lord had other plans. So tonight was the night, and he knew. Amen. Somebody say, he knew. He knew. Praise God. John chapter 11, beginning with verse number 1. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus. Everybody say Lazarus. Lazarus. Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold. Now I want you to notice what she's about to say here. Behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. She didn't say, Lazarus is sick. She didn't say, you know that guy we all know. She didn't say your neighbor. She didn't say your friend. She appeals to the heart of the Lord and says, He whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness, everybody say this sickness, is not unto death, but for the glory of God. Now, some people confuse that. They, they think that Jesus is saying, oh, he's not going to die. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus is saying, basically, he's not going to make it, but death's not going to get the glory. For the glory of God but for the glory of God that the son of God might be glorified thereby skip down to verse number 14 then said Jesus unto them plainly Lazarus is dead everybody say he's dead and then Jesus it almost sounds a little sarcastic but it's not sarcasm at all he says and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe Nevertheless, 
let us go unto him. Now, if your head and your heart's not in the right place, when you hear that, you get confused. Wait a minute, Lord. You're saying you're glad that he wasn't there. You're, it's almost like you're happy that he died. Because folks, and I want you to catch this tonight. Because sometimes, a lot of times, Jesus isn't concentrating on the miracle that you want right now. He's looking at the one he's got that's even greater down the road. Come on, somebody. The Lord knew that the tomb was not going to be the place that Lazarus was going to dwell. He had somewhere else he wanted him to be. Amen. So I want to preach to you with the help of the Lord tonight from this thought. I want to talk about Lazarus from the tomb to the table. Amen. Lazarus from the tomb to the table. Amen. Would you lift your hands, lift your Bibles. Everybody help me worship the Lord and pray right now. Jesus, I love you. I thank you for the power of your spirit. God, you alone are worthy to be praised. God, I want you to move in this house, move in this sanctuary. Touch every person here tonight. God, I want your word to touch the ears and the heart of every individual in this sanctuary. God, let us tune in on your word. Let us listen for your voice in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said in Jesus' name. I wonder if you could clap your hands to the Lord right now before you're seated. Come on, let's give him some praise. Amen. God bless you. you. may be seated. Thank you so much for standing and worshiping the Lord tonight. Amen. The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah chapter 12 and verse number 2. If you have your Bibles, you can look there with me if you'd like. Isaiah chapter 12 and verse number 2. It so wonderfully says, Behold, God is my salvation. How many are thankful for that tonight? I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. If there's one thing I've learned in living for God these many years, it's been this, that by resting completely and totally upon the Lord Jesus Christ and taking his promises at face value, I can drive out any paralyzing fear that would ever attempt to hinder my effectiveness in serving God. There's a kind of a, a biblical antidote, if you will, and it works every time. I will trust and not be afraid. Folks, there's something wonderful about learning how to trust in God. There is a peace that comes into your life when you finally learn how to trust in God. <clears throat> Many of our struggles that we have in living for the Lord, they come because of a lack of trust individuals who who always trust the Lord they can enter into a certain battlefield of their life if you will and we've all been there everybody here tonight has got battlefields in your life but the awesome thing about it sister Jenny is I can enter into any certain battlefield and I really truly can be unafraid because I know that as long as I'm serving God, I know that as long as I'm trusting in the Lord, that he's not going to let any harm come to me. But for those that are weak in the faith, it is a different story. The one who declares to be aware of all God's promises. But in that certain hour of trouble, in that certain time of despair, they forget every one of them. Friends, I've come to preach to you tonight that your true motive in living for God will always be tested and revealed in the event of conflict in your life. If you want to see what somebody's made of, let them walk through a trouble. Let them walk through a trial. If they give up on God you know what they're made of. But if they withstand the test, oh, come on now, if they walk through with their shoulders squared back, with their head held high, I'm telling you, that's somebody that trusts in the Lord. And I'm thankful today that I can trust in God. I'm not afraid of the things that come because I trust in him. Everybody's going to have an element of uncertainty. Everybody's going to have an element of doubt. But friends, we need to fight off 
the spirit of fear in our lives. The Bible tells us that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of, oh, come on now, of power and of love and of a sound mind. I can walk through every struggle, every situation, knowing that God is in control. And I'm telling you, not just when the semi-bad news comes. I'm not talking about when the little bit of bad news comes. I'm talking about when the horrible news comes. I'm talking about what it looks like that you're at the end of your rope. I've come to tell you that I serve a God that ties a big knot in the end of that rope. And he gives you just a, come on now, he gives you just a little bit more to hang on to. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. Help me praise him right now. Thank you, Jesus. Those who love him. Those who keep on believing in him, no matter what comes their way, shows their motive in living for God. You can tell somebody serious about living for God whenever something pops up in front of them and they just, they just truck right on through it. Doesn't mean they don't suffer a few blows. That doesn't mean they don't get a few bruises every now and again. That doesn't mean that you're not curled up in a ball in the middle of your bed in the middle of, night, of the night crying your eyes out because you don't understand. You're allowed to do that. You're a human being. You're going to struggle from time to time. Oh, but if I could have the spirit of Job where I could look up and say, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him and I will maintain. And I will maintain mine own ways before him. Brother Garrett, I'm not going to stop living for him. I'm not going to stop praising him. Hallelujah. And so Jesus explains the parable in the parable concerning the seed that fell on stony ground. He talks to us about what happens. In Luke chapter 8 and verse 13, the Bible says, They on the rock are they which when they hear, they receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe. Everybody say, for a little while. For a little while they believe, but in a time of temptation, fall away. Oh, how that explains us sometimes, Sister Sheila. We believe for a while, maybe even years. But in a time of temptation, we fall away. We love good preaching. We love reading the word of God. We love feeling the hot fires of God's truth and we know that it is true. But I've come to tell you, every ounce of preaching and every ounce of teaching and every scripture in the Bible is designed to teach you how to grow. I'm going to tell you something. If you leave this place and you don't learn how to grow from this message, there is a problem. If you go home and you open the Bible and you start reading it and you don't learn how to grow, there is a problem. It doesn't mean you don't understand, folks. It means you're not taking the word of God as you should. This word, whether I understand it all or not, is to help me to grow. I've come to tell you, I'm 41 years old, been pastor for almost 15 years, been in the ministry since I was 16, and I'm gonna tell you, I'm still learning from the Lord. I feel like a brand new babe in Christ because every day, I see something new in him. I don't stand up here today as somebody that's got all the answers. I don't have all the answers, but I do have one of them. I said, I don't have all the answers, but I got one of them here tonight, and his name is Jesus Christ. And he's the only answer. Come on, somebody. Like old Andre Crouch used to say, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there's no other. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Jesus is the way. So we see it all in perspective. Many people have no trouble receiving the word of God. Listen, as long as it promises prosperity right now. See, that's what the world wants. The world wants a quick fix. We want answers now. We want judgments now. We, we, we want somebody to, to do it for us now. But what we have to understand is sometimes in living for God, you're not going to get the answer right now. God, when he gives a promise, when he gives a covenant, Brother McCain, 
It does not include ifs and there are no buts in the deal. If ifs were in place, there would be no covenant. God makes a promise and he'll keep his promise to you. Once God makes a covenant with you and I, it is up to us to hold on to what God has done. To uphold what God has put in our lives. So what will help us endure today is a brand new faith and a brand new system of believing. A brand new outlook on what God does. Listen to me tonight. If I have the mentality that God always does what I ask him to do so that he can keep me believing, I'm wrong. What I need to understand is the links that God will go through to keep me believing the right way. Listen, it's not as long as God answers my prayer, I'm gonna stay in church. Uh Uh-uh, friend, that ain't what it's all about. What it's about is no matter what, comes my way I can walk through the flood I can walk through the fire I can walk through hell on earth but when it comes to the end I'm still going to be trusted in God see we say God as long if you'll do this for me if you'll do that for me that's not how we are supposed to believe sister Hollingsworth that's not what God expects from us God does not expect us to live for him when things are going good, but it's when things are going terribly wrong that God expects us to live for him. John chapter 11, we learn about Lazarus, a friend of Jesus that gets sick and dies. The miracle of this story is that Jesus brings him back to life after four days. Somebody say four days. Four days of being dead. Nobody believed that he would be brought back from the dead because he was dead. He was spent. He was deceased. For four days, he stank. You couldn't hardly get near him. The scripture says it. He stinks. They thought, like many of us sometimes, well, if Jesus was going to heal him, he'd have done it already. Come on, how many's ever thought that? Well, I guess if God was going to do it, he would have already done it. So awesome that we know so much about God. We know exactly what he thinks. We know exactly, we don't know. Come on, we've all said it. Well, I guess if God was going to do it, he would have already done it. No, because sometimes God has a miracle that transcends the one that you want right now. He may just have to let that situation die to get you to really believe. Folks, I'm not talking about the kind of faith that says, "Uh, as long as there's life, there's hope. As long as there's breath, there's hope. That's a good attitude to have, and I'm not against that attitude. But what Jesus is looking for is the kind of church that's going to have faith when it not just looks impossible, but when it is literally impossible. Folks, I believe in a God that knows how to split a Red Sea. I believe in a God that knows how to walk on water. I believe in a God that can take five loaves and fish and can split them up and feed an entire multitude of people. I believe in a God that can turn water into wine. He can open blinded eyes. He can unstop the deaf ears. You understand what I'm telling you? It's not about just if there's a little bit of hope. You got to trust God when there is no hope left. And we're not comfortable with that kind of faith. See, we're not. I remind you of the story of when God spoke to Abraham and God told Abraham, go, sacrifice your only son. But he didn't stop there. He said, sacrifice your only son and offer him up as a burnt offering. I don't know about you, but folks, burnt means burnt. And a burnt offering means that it was reduced to ashes. Now, I could see Abraham's faith if he says, I'm just going to, you know, stab him and make sure he doesn't, you know, his heart stops. But there's a body still there. He could still put life in it. 
there's lungs still there you know maybe I can do CPR maybe God will do CPR bring him back to life that's not what he's talking about he said I want you to make him a burnt offering Abraham killed his only son as God commanded him to do believing that when he reduced him to ashes that God would still raise him up from the dead you wonder why Abraham is our father of faith that's why is because when you have that kind of faith oh what are you going to do now that the situation is dead what are you going to do now that you've reached the end I tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to keep believing until God comes back I'm going to keep believing until God come on I feel the Holy Ghost some of you here tonight I don't care what kind of news you've been given you may think you're at the end of your rope you may think you're at the end of your road but I've come to preach to you don't ever stop believing because God God's got a place for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, you don't understand, Brother Maroney. I'm already in the tomb. I'm all, it's all, my situation is all but dead. But God has other plans for you. The Bible says in John 11 and 3, therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Don't you love how he does that? Oh, Lord, uh, the, how they do it. Lord, the one you love is sick. See, they're, they're tugging, on his, tugging on his heartstrings. You know what they're doing, Brother McCain? They're telling Jesus to pack his bags because they're fixing to send him on a guilt trip. Come on, Lord. The one that you love is sick. Come on now. The one, surely you got to do something about this. And Jesus said, no. I'm not going right now. Hold on a minute. If you'll go right now, everything will be all right. No. Because what's about to happen? Death is not going to get the glory. God's going to get the glory. Do you see what I'm saying? Jesus said, I'm going to get the glory when this thing is so impossible that the only one that can make it happen is when I step in. I've come to preach to you tonight. Please don't give up. Please don't lose faith. Please don't listen. I'm preaching to somebody tonight. I don't care if it's your family, if it's your friends, your finances, your marriage. I want you to hear me tonight. Never stop believing in God. Because when he shows up, he can make those things that are impossible, possible. Philippians 2 and 26, for he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that ye had, he had heard that you had been sick. Jesus doesn't like it when we suffer. Is everybody hearing me tonight? Jesus doesn't like it when you are hurting. He is filled with heaviness. When he knows, surely God's going to answer my prayers. Surely God will not allow anything bad to happen to me. But what was Jesus trying to teach us? Folks, Jesus was not trying to teach us that when you live for him, nothing bad's going to happen to you. Come on now. Jesus was not trying to tell you that if you're saved that everything's going to be sunshine and daisies that's not what he was trying to tell us but brother Perry what he was trying to tell us is is that in your darkest hour Jesus is going to be there that when you're locked in the tomb of your own problem he's going to be there so he's trying to give us a new type of believing a type of believing for past due hope. What about when the situation just doesn't look impossible, but that it is impossible? We've never walked in that dimension. Jesus said, and I, and I love this. I love how Jesus puts it. Jesus says plainly, you ready? Lazarus is dead. He says, but I'm thankful for your sakes that I was not there. He said, now... Now, Brother Hollingsworth, that he's been dead four days, now that he stinks, let's go to him. And when he went to him, the Bible says that he stood there at the entrance of the tomb and he said, Lazarus, 
come forth. He called his name. Lazarus came out of the tomb. We all know the story. He stays, Jesus said, loose him and let him go. They took the grave clothes off of him. And Lazarus was if he had never been dead. The very next chapter, the Bible tells us that when Jesus was there in the house of Martha and Mary, that he was sitting at the table and Lazarus was sitting at the table with him. I've come to preach to you tonight. Jesus took Lazarus from the tomb to the table and he's trying to tell some of you here tonight he wants to take you from your situation and put it at his table I don't know about you but I'm done with small thinking I'm done with negativity let everybody in the world say that we can't have revival let everybody in the world say that God can't answer your prayers I know the truth you know the truth come on somebody let's worship him right now Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Friend, he's more than just an on-time God. He is a running out of time, way behind schedule, but it doesn't matter because he's gonna show up, God. And that's the kind of faith that he wants us to have. He said, I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there. He said, to the intent that you may believe. Do you understand that? Oh, listen to what Jesus said. Brother Jesse, he said, as long as he's sick and you want me to come heal him, that's not really believing. But believing is when he's been dead four days and you still believe that I can do something about it. Do you understand? It's not about Jesus heal me. It's Jesus whatever your will is. And if, I, if this thing ends, I'm going to believe that you're going to work a miracle. No matter what my situation, you're going to work a miracle. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I've come to tell you that real, hardcore faith believes when it looks impossible. The Bible says in the book of Romans that he quickeneth the dead and he calleth those things which be not as though they were. I've come to ask you tonight. I'm getting ready to close in a second. But I've come to ask you tonight. Is there anybody here within the sound of my voice that you have peered into your life and you've looked head on into your problem and you know what you're looking at and it looks like it's hopeless it looks like that there's nothing but a dead end because I've come to preach to you Jesus is a life giver Jesus, Jesus. oh I need some help right here I said Jesus is a life giver and if he can do it for Lazarus he can do it for me listen to me again I'm fixing the clothes but you got to hear this why is it that Jesus why did he let them believe that Lazarus was dead for four days before he raised him up. He wanted them, Brother Barry, to believe that Lazarus would be dead for four days and Jesus could bring him back to life. I'll tell you why. And, and I prayed about this and this is the only thing I can figure out, Brother Wavy, is because if they would believe that Jesus could bring Lazarus back from the dead in four days, then those followers of his should have no trouble believing that when it came his time that he could come back in three. If you believe I can raise Lazarus back in four days, three days is not going to be a problem. It's just going to be a walk in the park for me. And the Bible says when Jesus came back from the grave that he walked with them on the road to Emmaus and they had no idea who he was. And while he talked with them, their hearts and their spirits burned inside of them. He talked about Moses and the prophets, things concerning himself. Bible says they constrained him to come in. They constrained him to come in and to sit and eat with them. Jesus, like Lazarus, went from the tomb to the table. And he sat down with them, Brother McCain, and the Bible says he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And when he broke the bread, he vanished from their sight and immediately their eyes were opened and they knew who he was. And they said, did not our hearts burn within us while he spake unto us? Folks, I'm gonna tell you, that same Jesus 
that came out of that tomb. The same Jesus that took Lazarus from a tomb to a table. The same Jesus that came out of his tomb and went to a table is the same Jesus that's here with you tonight. And everything in your life that you're going through, everything you're struggling with, God is here to work a miracle in your life. But folks, you have to believe. Brother Maroney can't make you do it. You understand? I can't make you be saved. I can't tell you every answer in the book that's going to round every corner and you're going to have a perfect life. I can't give that to you. But I can tell you that if you trust in God and not be afraid, God's going to carry you through it. Amen. I want you to stand with me right now. Lift your hands to heaven. Come on, all across this place. Let's love him right now. Lift your hands. Let's give God glory right now. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise him. Jesus, we love you. Open your heart to him right now. Come on, I feel the Holy Ghost. Jesus, we love you tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, there's somebody within the sound of my voice tonight. You need God in a supernatural way. If you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost, you can get it tonight. If you need a touch in your body, you can receive it tonight. Hallelujah, come on, come on.